here we are on, I've taken a little bit of a couple days off here and I'm getting a lot of comments, a lot of texts, a lot of emails. So here we are with today's recipe. We are going to be making unstuffed cabbage rolls today. Yummy um, cabbage casserole that can be made from what's in your pantry. Of course, you're gonna need a cabbage, um, but pretty much whatever you have left can go in this. So you can doctor it up however, whatever you have, whatever you like, whatever your family likes, um, and you can make it right out of your pantry. So I'm gonna get started here. Try and get my comments so I can see who's on and who's commenting so I can visit live. It's been a busy day of real estate today. We are, of course, still real estating um, because, you know, thank heavens for DocuSign and great fo photos and we can still do all the things that we need to do. But the dinner time always comes every night and what are we gonna make? So tonight, unstuffed cabbage rolls. So I've already started to brown the, I have a pound in here, just so you can see. I have a pound of ground beef and a pound of turkey that's getting browned. I thought I was gonna get a head start on this to save time on the live. In here I have one, chopped onion that is chopped and ready to go in, diced. So here we go, in there. And then I have already cut half of the head of cabbage just in to dice, but I'll show you how I did that um, so you can see. And then um, here we go, cabbage, found one. There was plenty. I always try and pick a cabbage just like how I pick iceberg lettuce, pick it with weight it should be the heaviest one that you can find so it's dense none of these were super heavy in the store today but this is what i have so heather it's organic <laughs> are you on there i think you are so i'm going to cut the core out of this so some people are like how do you cut a cabbage this is how i'm just going to cut the core out and then oh Getting text and comments and on the on the on, on the live here. Hold on a second. Let me scroll down just a bit so I can read these. Oh, yay! Here we are. Hi, Erica and Tammy. Hi, guys. Welcome. Okay, cabbage. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of dice it like you would an onion, just to make it simpler. I'm gonna cut slice slice here because this doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful it's going in a basically in a in a casserole so i'm going to dice it and it ends up as a dice you can see what i've got going here nothing fancy there just cut it up and that is ready simple easy make sure i don't use my core there Okay, so that's our whole head in the bowl and here. In the meantime, I've got the onions going here in the pot with the meat that was already browning. So like I said, I have a pound of turkey and a pound of beef just for flavor, but if I was really watching points and or calories, I would just be using just the turkey. So I have the onions in there, and now we're going to throw our flavorings in here. One of my hacks that I use, you know the Instagram probably can't see this, but on Facebook you can. I took a can of Rotel. I always have a recipe that's really the inspiration and then make it my own based on what we like and what we have. In these days, it's what do you have? So I um, took a can of Rotel. You can see it's in the bowl here. And um, Rex, my son, is not super crazy about chunks of tomatoes in anything. So to sneak them in, I took the Rotel in the bowl with the immersion blender give it a whirl and what do we have we basically have tomato puree but yet we still have that flavor of rotel to give the dish that you're making flavor and or even for spaghetti sauce or things like that i still sometimes will just puree the can of t tomatoes if i don't have crushed or if i only have whole and i want them to be crushed you just boom immersion blender good to go so that works great I'm just trying to see all you guys on here so I can chat. It's always more fun to chat while we're, do, while we're doing this. So I'm going to take the can of Rotel and put that in here with our sauteed 
meat and the onions that are sauteing here and start my flavor. So the rotel's going in, the pureed rotel. And then I have a can here of just regular tomato sauce, just a can, nothing fancy that I'm sure everyone has one in their pantry. And then I'm gonna take um, salt, about a teaspoon and a half, of course, measure very carefully. <laughs> Throw it on in there. Um, just make sure I've got everything here in my hand. And some pepper. Of course, again, measured very carefully. And then it calls for a tablespoon of dried marjoram. Okay, I didn't have any. So I had to add this when I had to go to the store. I needed a cabbage to do this, but I also needed some marjoram. So I, now I have some. I don't know what I'll ever use it in, but right now I'm using it in this. So here, here we go. Let's so get a tablespoon. So whenever I use um, dried herbs, I put them in my hand here and I'm gonna crush them up and put them in there and stir all that around. Here, I'll show you what we've got going here so far with the rotel and the tomato sauce and uh you can see you can see in there can you guys see yes and now it calls for okay recipes when they call for one cup of something like one cup of beef stock are you kidding me like who does that don't you do things by the can i do so we're going to make it work, work here i think instead of using any water i'm just going to take the extra beef stock Stir it around in my tomato sauce can, boom. Throw that in, the beef stock in, and there you have it. <laughs> uh, back to spices. We are gonna go a uh, half a teaspoon of the paprika. So it's Hungarian paprika, but I have ground paprika, so that's what, well, that's what we're gonna use here. So we've got ground paprika, I'm just gonna put a teaspoon in, because I put a little more meat than what called for. So there we go. Then a cool thing I thought that was in this recipe, because I've made this before as a casserole, because I just don't have enough time or patience in my life to roll the cabbage rolls. That would just never happen, especially since I just got home from work. I've been home from work, but been working, and it's 6.30, and you know, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? So this one has, calls for two tablespoons of raisins, which I thought was really pretty cool. So this is probably about two tablespoons tablespoons of raisins so they're going in and they will get reconstituted while they're in there so raisins are in just want to make sure I get all my things in here we've got the beef and turkey salt onion garlic oh the garlic hello okay this recipe called for one clove of garlic one clove of garlic who puts one clove of garlic in any recipe ever yeah not enough there's four cloves of, of garlic here so we'll put those in. Yummy. It's starting to smell yummy in here. Yes, awesome. So I'm not even sure four cloves of garlic was enough in there for me. But that's what we got going on there. Okay, garlic. I'm gonna keep this one. Since I don't have my teleprompter, uh, garlic, mushroom, pepper, tomato sauce, paprika, the beef stock, raisins, oh, and a little rice. Um, I did um, pre-cook about a cup of brown rice. Now you don't have to put this in if you're keeping it low carb, but I'm gonna put a little bit in of this rice just to soak up all this flavor. Now you could serve it in a bowl over rice. You could serve it in a bowl over cabbage. So I've done this before where you make your little meat sauce and then take a casserole dish, put the cabbage in, meat sauce, cabbage in, meat sauce like a lasagna, and then bake it. You can put a little cheese on top if you want, um, and it comes out delicious, and my boys loved it. So that's always a great thing. But tonight I'm just gonna do it in this pot. So in goes the cabbage, and our liquid things in there are bubbling away. Uh, put this all this cabbage in so a whole head which is why we picked the large leg crusade 
tonight so all these things fit because once the cabbage cooks down it won't take up the whole pot but right now we got a whole pot of cabbage <laughs> and the good things in the bottom here so let me see it's starting to get hot so I'm gonna grab whose parents made your moms make cabbage rolls mine didn't make cabbage rolls we weren't from the Midwest but I'm sure lots of parents moms did make cabbage rolls but this is the easy way so I'm going to let the um, cabbage cook down here in this yummy sauce that we just made. And I actually added the can of Rotel to my inspiration recipe because I just knew it was going to need a little more zip than what was in this. So that, getting that all mixed in. Oh my gosh, it's looking yummy. And then I'll put the lid on this and let it cook for a few minutes till the cabbage cooks down. And it will be yummy. Now you could serve this um, over, you know, like I said, what, uh, whatever you like. I actually had a um, acorn squash that I hadn't cooked yet that's been here in our pantry. So I cut it in half and I roasted it. So it's cooked and ready. So I think I'm going to serve a little bit of, a of acorn squash and put this on top of it. So it'll add an another piece. Then I thought, well, I probably could have just pre-baked that acorn squash a little bit in cubes and just put it into the pot as just another ingredient. Sweet potato would be good in this to throw that into. Um, but garnishes on this, you could use some almonds, some sliced almonds, some nuts sour cream of course what's not good with sour cream i don't know heather do you want ketchup on this <laughs> heather my ketchup queen um may, uh, maybe let me see i'm gonna try and read some of your comments here if i can read them and uh let's see a uh, yes one pop recipe oh thank you my outfit how does yellow work on camera so what are you guys all making for dinner? I actually didn't even think about what I was gonna wear. I just what I wore for working today. And um, here we are, dinner in one pot. So if anyone has any ideas or suggestions on things you want me to make, I'm happy to. I have another recipe plan for tomorrow. I'm thinking I'm gonna be making quiches tomorrow. Cause again, I'm trying to think of things that you can throw together with things you already have in your pantry. And the great thing about quiche as long as you have some eggs, a little bit of cheese, whatever you have left in your pantry, boom, put it in a pie shell, here we go. So tomorrow I'm thinking we'll do some quiches, which will be yummy, um, just with what I have. I know I have some bacon and some ham and cheese and um, we'll make those yummy. So good to see everyone and I hope everyone is surviving. <laughs> um, we're just plugging away and uh, really enjoying our time at home. I think there's some closets that'll be calling my name that have been, but haven't seemed to tackle those yet, even though we've been home more than most right, uh, regularly. So let me see. I'll just give you one more shot at this and show you what this looks like. Oh my gosh, it smells so yummy. Because the cabbage just cooks right down and it just looks delish. So here we go. Here we go. Can you see on there? Can you see on there? Yummy cabbage and our meat and our sauce. Yum! Okay, dinner. Again, I made plenty, so I will get out my little trays like I made the other day with the enchiladas. Oh, and I saw what a couple of my friends have made the enchiladas already. I just got a photo. Megan, if you're on, post a picture on here of the enchiladas. Hers are absolutely gorgeous. She just sent me a picture. So glad you guys are loving these recipes. I had a couple people make the tuna casserole and um, I'm so excited. So this is fun and it's really fun to see you guys and talk to you guys um, when we're live and we wish you all the best. Happy Wednesday.